Today we will explore the implementation of transparent data encryption in a disaster recovery scenario. Transparent data encryption, or TDE, is a crucial feature of Microsoft SQL Server designed to safeguard sensitive data at rest by encryption database files. Here is a breakdown on how TDE works and the key components. Encryption of database files. TDE encrypts data files, log files, and backup files using a database encryption key called DEC. Automatically encryption and decryption. Enabling TDE results in automatically encryption of data when written to disk and decryption when read from disk. This process remains transparent to the application and users eliminating the need for any modification to utilize the encrypted database. Database encryption key, DEC. Certificate or asymmetric key, protecting the DEC. Implementing and managing TDE in SQL Server involves creating necessary keys and certificates, enabling TDE for desired databases, and effectively managing encryption keys and protectors to ensure secure data access. Now that we understand the fundamentals of transparent data encryption in SQL Server, let's delve into how TDE operates. When a user attempts to access the SQL Server database with TDE, SQL Server retrieves the necessary key to access the database files and returns the data to the user. In another scenario, when restoring a database from a backup, SQL Server requires the exact key used to encrypt the backup to successfully restore the database. An essential aspect to highlight here is that SQL Server must have access to the correct key in both cases, but in case of the backup, the key used could be dated back one, two, or three years, depending on your TDE key rotation policy. Therefore, maintaining and ensuring the correct key is crucial to restore all versions of the database. Now, let's explore how TDE works in Azure SQL Manage instance. Although it functions similarly to SQL Server, being a platform as a service solution, Azure SQL Manage instance offer additional advantages in managing TDE keys, referred to as TDE protectors. There are two ways to implement TDE in Azure SQL Manage instance. First is service managed keys. Azure SQL Manage Instance handle all aspects of maintaining, securing, and accessing your TDE keys. The system ensures you have the correct key during all operations and rotate the keys every 90 days. This configuration is the default for TDE and it is enabled by default for all new databases created on Azure SQL Manage Instance. Customer managed keys. While uh, Azure manage the operations, a new component is introduced to the architecture, Azure Key Vault. This addition helps managing and secure your TDE keys. However, you as a customer are responsible for implementing key rotation based on the policies and ensuring a resilient architecture to support business continuity. All right, let's dive into the implementation details of a disaster recovery scenario using transparent data encryption with custom managed keys in Azure SQL Managed instances, focusing on crucial elements. For this exercise, uh, envision our primary environment residing in Central US, with our secondary in East US too. The goal is to establish synchronization between two Azure key vaults, ensuring key availability for both environments and addressing potential Azure key vault failures. In this example, Azure Automation takes center stage, ensuring synchronization of Azure Key Vaults. Additionally, it oversees key rotation policies, making certain that keys are synchronized across both Azure Key Vaults. This process also acts as a backup mechanism for our keys. A key point to highlight is the assignment of the TDE protectors and the backup TDE protectors on both Azure SQL Managed instances. In our case, here, we will be using location specific, the TDE protector corresponding to the Azure Key Vault in the respective region, ensuring a localized and secure approach. We will demonstrate this configuration shortly. 
In this architecture, we prioritize data privacy, employing private links to restrict communication exclusively within our private networks, eliminating any public access. To summarize, our key focus areas includes establishing and maintaining two synchronized Azure key vaults with all keys via backup and restore or automation process, proper assignment of the TD protectors and backup TD protector on both Azure SQL managed instances based on their respective locations. Now, let's uh, go for a quick uh, demonstration on how do you set up uh, those configurations. Now, let's take a look on how to configure the TD protector and the TD backup protector on both uh, Azure SQL Managed Instances. So let me go here to my Azure portal where I have pre-configured uh, an environment with uh, two uh, Azure SQL Managed Instances and two key vaults uh, in different regions. So my first step will be uh, making sure that uh, the Azure SQL Managed Instances has access on both uh, Azure Key Vault to the key that I'm going to use as my TD protector. So I'm going to select here my first key. I'm going to go into Access Control. I'm going to do Add Role, and I'm going to search for Key Vault Crypto Service Encryption user. There you go. I'm going to select it, hit next. Since we are talking about manage instance, I need to select manage identity, do a select member. In the manage identity, I'm going to select SQL manage instance, and I'm going to make sure that I select both of them. I'm going to do review and assign, view and assign, and I'm going to wait until Azure confirms that, that the operation was uh, completely successful. Okay, so now I'm going to move to the second uh, Azure Key Vault, select the same key, go to the Access Control, once again add a new role. I'm going to select here Azure Key Vault Crypto Service encryption user. Hit next. Select manage identity. Click on select members. SQL manage instances. Make sure that I have both selected and then review and assign. Review and assign. Once again, wait for the confirmation of Azure that the operation was successful and now move to uh, the Azure SQL manage instances. Go to my Transparent Data Encryption uh, tab, click on Customer Manage Keys, select a key, Key Vault, select the first Key Vault, since this is the first SQL Manage instance, select my certificate, select, make sure for the first a Key Vault on the first SQL Manage Instance, I have marked as default protector and hit save and wait until Azure gives me uh, the, the alert that the operation was concluded. Okay, so the operation was successful. So now what I need to do is uh, to assign my backup key. So I'm gonna again click on change key, key vault, Select now the second for the backup of the first manage instance. Select, and now since this is not the default anymore, I'm gonna unselect this and hit save and wait for the operation to be finished. Okay, so now I have the two operations on the first one. So now I'm gonna repeat this same operation on the second uh, manage instance, so, but in reverse. So I'm going to select custom manage keys, change the key, key vault. Since this is the secondary instance, 
I main, uh, key vault is going to be the second one, the same key, select. Now, protector will be the second, save. Wait for the operation to be successful. Okay, so now I'm going to set up my backup. So, change key, key vault. I'm going to select the first one, the same key, select, unmark the default protector for my backup, and hit save, and wait for the, the operation to be successful finish. So now I have both key vaults with my keys there, both manage instances with the access to the key on the key vault, and both manage instances with the TD protector and the backup configured. And this is how you configure a disaster recovery scenario for transparent data encryption with custom managed keys in Azure SQL Managed Instance. Thank you.